This is our Forex blog for December 6, 2012. And one of the first things I'd like to show is uh, our easy three-step Forex trading system is we start with our currency meter and we identify which currencies are strong, which ones are weak, and then we just simply buy the strong ones versus the weak and sell the weak versus the strong. The two strongest ones are the Australian and especially the New Zealand. And most people trade the dollar or yen pairs. So especially here, 3 o'clock, 3.30, both of them go weak. This is using uh, many of our statistical trend tools on multiple time frames. We have ones that measure the percentage of currencies going up or down. Uh, you can adjust the weights at the beginning and then the period, the settings uh, at the end. Some of them measure the percentage of currencies above or below the 15 minute period moving average, above or below the 60 minute moving average. That's only 11% of the weighting. The intensity of the trends we give 20 percent weighting and we have two tools that measure on a bar by bar basis how much they're up going up or down based on uh, the average for that time of the day and we also incorporate the daily weekly monthly uh, monthly trend only has four percent weighting so one third of this is the longer term daily weekly monthly trend two thirds is real time trend and it really makes it simple by looking at just one color there's no ambiguity dollars and yen are weak uh, New Zealand is the strongest so we want to buy the New Zealand dollar. So let's bring up the New Zealand dollar. You can see that this one was trending up uh, last night. Extreme strength. We have a buy signal right here when it goes up. You might have got stopped out without a small uh, small loss. Buy six pips. When it breaks out right here, you go long again. Always draw your fibs to get a feel for uh, where the market's going to go. And somewhere between the first and second fib target is where you, you want to get out. Uh, our counter trend signal gave an alert here. It goes one pip below the low here. You're out at 35. You're in this trade at 91 for a nice, um, you know, almost 45 pip win. Then you buy this pullback here, went sideways. You might have a small win, small loss. Breaks out here, made 10 pips. Bought this one here, lost five pips. Um, and once the markets, you, you can see the real time momentum tools on here. When it's strong, it's likely to go up. This was the first down move that had some intensity. As it's going sideways right here, there's no strength. So, you know, an aggressive trader, once they realize it went above our upper containment bands, it's likely to reverse. Uh, most of the time, currencies will retrace at least 38% of the up move. So you have your profit target ahead of time and it hasn't hit it yet. Draw your fibs from the, the low, the high, and your profit target's right here at around 83.09. So it came really within just two pips of the 38% retracement. So if you shorted right here, you would have made about uh, 10, or, 10 or 11 pips on that counter trend trade. Let's take a look at the New Zealand Yen. This is another one that we'd be looking to buy today. Uh, and most of the time, I don't like to buy above the red band, and especially not the white band. So this one right here is a little iffy. Waiting for a little bit deeper pullback is better. A lot of times when the markets go sideways, the bands reset themselves at, at a higher level. And so this trade right here is pretty high probability, 80, uh, 6830 went all the way up to 6867. Uh, so a nice 35-pip win there. Or if you bought this right here, you made 15 pips. When the market's gone up, gone up, gone up, usually the fourth or fifth wave is the end of the move. You can draw your fibs on, on that little tiny uh, last swing to get in a feel for where the market's going to go. You can also bring up uh, a longer-term chart and uh, get a feel for uh, the likely uh, high. Let's put a 30 minute chart on here. And when you draw a trend line and you right click on it and you duplicate it, and you project it off the highs, there's a high. It also may slow down. Here's a, a high right here. At where it tried to go back up and failed. Notice where it stalled at 68, 70, 68, 65, 70. These are excellent places to look for counter trend trades. I wouldn't go short the first time it gets hit, but anytime a trend, trend line that's projected off the lows, off the highs, gets hit, can't penetrate it, it tries to go higher, really fails at that high here. This is a pretty decent counter trend trade, and you made 15 pips on the way down. I wouldn't uh, expect more than 10 or 15 pips on a counter trend trade, be lucky you got it, and then you know get out. Obviously, the New Zealand was one of the uh, strongest. The euro became super weak. So the euro New Zealand was an excellent one to be looking for sales in. 
as you can see. Absolutely got crushed. And you knew ahead of time that New Zealand was an excellent one to be uh, buying. Uh, since this is on the bottom, you sell the euro against it. This was a big move down. You got a nice little pullback right here. And I typically, once I see a nice strong trend like this, I'll sell the first move, this little low right here, and also one more, but that's about it. It, it really becomes risky once it's gone down one wave, two waves. This is the third wave down. It's like it's likely at this point to retrace uh, back up to at least 38% of this down move, which is 56.30. Selling between 30 and 54 is a relatively high probability place to look for sell. So it's got quite a while to pull back up before uh, relatively safe high probability sells come into being. Once this first drop happened, notice where it retraced to. A lot of times the 38% Anytime you have a strong currency, that's as far up as you're going to get. I noticed when I was trading the euro dollar today, it did not retrace uh, that much. As you can see, it you know didn't come anywhere close to the 38%. So really, if you were trading the euro dollar today, once it went up, came down, went up again, failed to go over that high, once it breaks the low here, it's pretty high probability. You can go to a five pips per bar chart and really spot high probability trades uh, you know, very easily. And if you're afraid to, to use a five pips per bar stop plus uh, you know, a pip or two padding, you can go to three pips per bar. And this really becomes a low risk scenario because you're risking just three pips. So when this went up off the lows, and at the time I wasn't sure we we're gonna have as big a drop as we had. We made a slightly lower low right here. Uh, I thought we might get a bounce. I was looking forward to selling the 38%. But when it wasn't able to go over this high, you really got to go short right here. And you, you know, a lot of times when the market makes a, a breakdown from the lows, it goes down a few pips and then shoots right back up. You never know that. So if, if you use a small, uh, in this case, three pips per bar uh, chart on here, you can just start lowering your, your stop very fast. And if you wanted to, you could get out of the trade right here. You go short again right here, you know, with a super, super tight four or five pip stop. Uh, and at that point, since it's already fallen so much, you draw your fibs off that last little wave and you have your profit target ahead of time. If it stalls at the first one, you're out. In this case, it went down in 92, I would have got out of this. And I wouldn't have sold underneath that area even though it did continue down and down and down. Uh, there is such a thing as managing your risk and avoiding you know, high risk, low probability trades. Even though it works uh, on occasion, you know, the majority of the time when you sell the lows or buy the highs after it's gone, you know, three waves, uh, it's a, a risky trade.